This video is sponsored by Intel and their new Arc Series GPUs. Every single day, I'm doing some sort of content creation or gaming on a computer. I can't live without a machine that's capable of keeping up with the latest games or the heaviest of edits. Okay, I think we're done. I put a little hat on his head. Happy holiday. Using a budget PC is usually out of the question and GPUs have become very, very expensive. I think it's time for a little bit of competition. And if anybody's gonna stir up some competition, it's gotta be one of the big players in the PC chip market. And there's not many big players that can do that. Intel took it upon themselves. So it's up to them to stir up the market, force some competitive pricing, and maybe shake things up, change the way that GPUs do things. Intel's Arc GPU is immensely impressive in a market that's already been dominated by the same companies for decades. They've found a way to make it affordable but powerful in a lot of ways. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's perfect. It's Intel's first foray into GPUs. But depending on how you use your PC, you could be saving a ton of money and end up with performance and quality that is on par or sometimes even better than more expensive devices. And what's even better than that is that these things are actually available. You can like go to the store and buy one if you want to. You don't have to pick one up from a scalper. They sent me this iBuyPower PC with a 12 core, 4.9 gigahertz, 12th generation i7 CPU. and the latest Intel Arc A750 GPU that work in tandem. That's what provides such high performance at a budget. This thing is only $1,199. I can't think of another build that can get the same benchmarks for anywhere close to that price point. Side note, there's a lot of people who always say that you could just build a cheap computer instead of buying one of the new consoles. No, you can't. You absolutely cannot. It's, the price is never comparable. PCs do completely different things. Sure, you can upgrade your current computer for probably pretty cheap, but if you're starting from the ground up, you need like a case, you need a motherboard, you'll forget a power adapter, I'm sure. So this thing just has everything you need right there, and it's still pretty cheap. Sometimes seeing a price point like that on a channel like this where we mostly talk about consoles is, is is a little jarring, but I, but it, it's a it's a different market that we're in right now. Okay, put put on your PC gamer hats today. We're doing more than just playing games here. We're doing work. This is take your viewers to work day. You can see how to like record gameplay and stuff. It's also strange that I mostly talk about consoles, but the game that I've probably been playing the most lately is Valorant. Believe it or not, and, and I'm still hard stuck bronze. Leave, leave me alone. I'm 33. On me, on me. He's one shot. On me, two of them. Oh, don't worry, I, I got him. So of course this is the first game that I tried on the Arc GPU. Valorant's anti-cheat does a weird thing where it requires you to select secure boot in the BIOS. So make sure you're gonna do that with any computer you're gonna use. I had to set this one to custom. But after that, I was very surprised by how well this thing ran. I was getting even higher frame rates than my $1,600 rig. Even though this is a budget PC, you can push this thing to 4K and it will still output some pretty high frame rates. I know 4K isn't really like what most PC people like to do when they're playing games, but it's where I like to be because I have these two big 4K monitors for editing and HDMI 2.1 consoles and stuff. And if you've ever had two monitors with mismatched frame rates, especially while you're playing games, you know, it really sucks. So I like to just leave them at 4K, even when I'm playing games. And for the most part, it's perfectly fine. At 4K, you're getting up over 144 Hertz in Valorant, which is perfect for me. I don't need much more than that. My monitors are 144 Hertz anyway. 
If you're looking for the best quality out of your games, I'd recommend leaving this at a max of 1440p, which will get you around 260 frames per second in Valorant. Maybe it'll give you some more system resources, but there's not much difference when bringing it down to 1080p. You're still getting around 260 frames per second. So feel free to let her rip. PC players usually do like to let her rip. I mean, uncap the frame rate. Games these days usually pull your inputs based on whatever the frame rate is. So the faster the frame rate, the quicker your inputs will get read, theoretically. We can debate whether or not that will get you out of bronze another time. Uncapping the frame rate on a good GPU like this might cause the game to run at a frame rate that is higher than your screen's refresh rate, which can cause the dreaded screen tearing. Normally, you could do something like turn on VSync to get rid of screen tearing. VSync will lock the game's frame rate to the monitor's refresh rate. Well, that defeats the purpose of having a big, beefy, expensive graphics card, doesn't it? Every graphics card company has their own version of VSync, and they all work more or less the same. Intel has something called Smooth Sync, and this allows you to run your games completely uncapped, and it minimizes the screen tearing with a dithering filter. That way, it doesn't have to lock the frame rate at all. So it won't be a distraction anymore while you're clicking heads, or trying to. How many shots? How many shots does it take? I just kept missing the, the guy. I'll be honest, gaming on this thing wasn't even my intended purpose. I, I, that's not even the thing I was excited about when I got this thing. Intel has been working really hard on hardware encoding for video, specifically AV1 encoding. This means better streaming quality, better video capture, especially for gameplay, better content creation in general. And that's kind of what we do here. That's why this thing is most exciting to me. So even though this thing is cheaper than a lot of other machines, it can outperform those other machines in some aspects, like with content creation. Did you do the laundry yet? No. Did you do the dishes? No. Did you pick the kids up from school? There's kids here. Did you pick the kids up from school yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I'll get to all that while this is exporting. Okay, great. Go here, I'll do a little bit of this, and I'll come right back when it's done. And it's done. Okay. I guess they'll have to stay there another day. Ah! The reason AV1 is so exciting is because you can get really high quality video at really low bit rates, which is good news for you, even as a viewer of YouTube, because you can change a setting right there on your YouTube to prefer AV1 videos which theoretically should be faster with less buffering and less strain on your computer with the Intel Arc GPU. It'll also be less of a strain if you have a weak internet connection for whatever reason, and it would still be delivering the same quality as it would have otherwise. But it's exciting for me as a creator because it means I can get much better quality video at much lower bit rates. Think about that for streaming on a website like Twitch. Twitch only allows you to stream at 6,000 kilobits per second and at a 1080p resolution, 60 frames per second, which is not nearly enough to stream at that quality. That's at least the max bit rate they say you can do. Partners have been able to stream at 8,000 kilobits per second for a long time now. And I've been streaming on this computer over here at 10,000 kilobits per second. Don't let them know that I know that I can do that. I don't think I'm supposed to be able to. But that's still a really low bit rate, making the quality really not great. So me and a lot of other people have been streaming at weird resolutions like 960p or I stream at 864p and I always get questions about why. It's because it looks better at that terrible bit rate. But with AV1, that low bit rate isn't a concern. 1080p looks fantastic. No bit crushing or anything. And if it's integrated into the GPU, your computer doesn't have to work so hard. So even just recording your gameplay will look better because your computer doesn't have to work as hard to record it. At the same bit rate, your files will be around the same size as if you were recording using X264 encoding, which is using your CPU, but they'll be way better quality and you'll be using way less processing power. 
and Twitch is working on implementing this AV1 encoding. So this is very exciting news for Twitch streamers who are maybe locked at that 6,000 kilobits per second. There's really no other way to get that sort of quality. Here are some tests I did recording gameplay at various resolutions using AV1 encoding versus X264 encoding. At 10,000 kilobits per second, the differences are subtle, but what I did notice is that I'm getting a lot more frames in game using AV1 encoding over X264 while recording my gameplay. So if you're doing a one PC footage or streaming setup, this new architecture should be a substantial upgrade. Most of you guys would probably realistically be using this at 6,000 kilobits per second at 1080p. So watch this a few times and see the comparisons here. You're looking for those big blocky pixel looking things, those bit crushing, and there's noticeably less of that on the left. So this thing can play all of the games that I'm interested in on PC and get the same quality that I have on my more expensive PC. So. The first exciting thing about Intel's first foray into GPUs is that it's just cheaper and you still end up with the same quality gaming as you would on its direct competition. The second exciting thing is that you can record or stream your gameplay while you're playing and not compromise in quality at all. You don't have to lower your graphical settings in game. You don't have to lower your video quality for the re recording that you have. You don't have to lower the bit rate, you don't have to lower the resolution or anything. This is the best rig you can get right now, specifically for content creation, and specifically for games proven compatible with Arc and the ones we talked about today, which is a lot of games. And they're constantly improving that list. They recently just added more DirectX 9 support, which was a concern to some people, so games like CSGO run a lot better now. Oh, I forgot the third reason why this thing's really exciting. I'm sick of GPU price gouging. I'm so sick of little to no innovations in GPUs. Year after year, they barely come out with anything different. I really hope that Intel continues to support ARC and improving on it in the next couple of years. We need this competition so desperately. Even if this isn't the GPU for you, this thing still helps you out. It helps everybody. We all need this sort of competition in the GPU space. Shaking up the industry in this way can only be a good thing for everybody. And if you wanna try out the Intel Arc for yourself, you can check out this iBuy Power PC at the link in the description below, or you can get the Intel Arc standalone and shove it into your current build for insanely cheap. I'm hoping that this will be the perfect thing for some of you out there. So what do you guys think about the Intel Arc GPU, AV1 encoding, content creation, recording gameplay, streaming, that terrible bitrate that Twitch has? What do you think about all that stuff? Or do you have any questions or, or is there a different way that you would utilize something like this? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, or any and all of this other social media garbage. Thank you, Intel, for sponsoring this video and for getting me this friggin' bad boy. YouTube doesn't like to push videos like this, so if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed so you see more videos like this and you can leave a like. And of course, share this video with a friend, a friend who's maybe looking for that perfect little thing to upgrade their setup. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.